All right, traders, how are you? Welcome back to another week of trading currencies with a team. Uh, this week is going to be, um, well, quite different. And, uh, well, there's a lot of setups that I have on my watch list, but I'm not going to go through all of them right now. Um, we're going to talk about um, the direction of the market that we are going to be trading, first of all, right? Uh, and uh, our main focus always the uh, US dollar. So let's start by looking at the DXY, the US dollar currency index on the daily. And uh, on the daily, to be completely honest, looks kind of bearish, right? Uh, big level here, big, big, big level, 9250 uh, level, which was rejected on Friday. Friday's candle was extremely bearish, engulfing um, uh, Thursday's candle. And, uh, well, today we are having a uh, negative day on the US dollar. Well, quite neutral, actually. The DXY is only down 0.04%. Uh, but uh, let's look at some levels, levels that we are watching. And um, by looking at the 4-hour chart, right, looking at the 4-hour chart, uh, the key level that uh, is going to be at least... Um, our level to define the uh, short-term direction on the U.S. dollar is the uh, 93.38 level, or last week's highs, right? Right now, price is trading below late last week's highs, below um, the weekly pivot, right? And uh, if we go to the hourly chart, um, this is what I am waiting, actually. Um, right now, today's range is is very 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 tight right uh, but like I said before price is trading below the weekly period and right there testing Friday's highs if price breaks with Friday's highs then we are going to get that bearish continuation that we are looking for right um, uh, we already uh, short on the uh, US dollar Japanese yen um, and uh, let's uh, start by looking at that set up very quickly on, um, uh, well, on the uh, daily. I I'm going to write the analysis, of course, but uh, let's just have a quick look at why we sold the uh, US dollar against the Japanese yen. Just have a look at how bearish that looks at the top of the structure on the daily. And uh, we sold it at the break of Friday's lows, right? So, uh, again, uh, price was, was trading in a very tight range, with the US dollar also trading in a very tight range. Uh, and at the break of uh, Friday's lows, uh, we decided to sell this um, um, uh, this market. Now, um, if we look at uh, yen futures, right, Japanese yen futures, uh, this is also the main reason that uh, we sold the US dollar against the Japanese yen, because... Uh, the Japanese yen futures broke uh, higher on that uh, continuation pattern above the weekly period, right? Breaking with Friday's highs. So a rally in uh, the yen is going to be, <coughs> I'm sorry, is going to be bearish for the US dollar Japanese yen. Now, uh, having said that, um, let's look at uh, some major currency pairs, right? Um, the uh, GBP. Uh, let's uh, talk about the pound, right? A pound against the U.S. dollar. Now, uh, we saw the pound against the U.S. dollar break with that uh, uh, mid-term structure, right? This one right here started uh, in, um, well, in the middle of May 2020. <clears throat> so, uh, more than a year ago, the uh, GBP against the U.S. dollar has been trading in a very steady bullish structure now uh last week we saw uh price breaking with the um with the low of the structure but uh like i said um on uh, i think it was on uh uh before non-farm payrolls friday uh this um is to me is not a signal or a sign of uh a uh, bearish market or a uh, reversal in this uh, very uh, well, it, it is a long-term structure, right? Now, my key level, or my make it or break it level for bulls is this one right here, this lows, right? 
around the 136 uh, 70 let's call it the 136 70 now should price break with those lows yes we will be looking for shorts on the pound right on the pound but uh, right now uh, this looks very much like a fake out and um, Friday's candle was extremely bullish close extremely bullish confirming that fake out or that bear trap now uh, let's have a look at the short term or at the uh, four hour chart uh, because I was looking at the possibility of buying uh, the pound against the US dollar but uh, uh, we decided to go with the pound yen as you already know right uh, actually let's have a look at the hourly what I what I, what I liked about this um, uh, possible setup was a break of Friday's highs, right? Uh, with some tight stops below today's lows. But the thing about this is that, um, yeah, I mean, breaking with Friday's highs confirms, it doesn't really confirm a uh, reversal in this market, right? Why? Because uh, the overall structure, right? The overall structure uh, or the upside on this overall structure is capped by this level right these lows right here um and the reason is that um well you can see in historic price action this is where we where buyers jumped in and this is again where sellers jumped in at the break of uh, that support zone so we are going to have a ton of sell orders here so um uh, buying the breakout of friday's high was extremely extremely uh um well um it, w it would have been extremely unprofitable why because uh we are very very close to that big big volume zone so what we're going to do is we are going to wait and see if buyers are strong enough to swipe with all the sell orders that are in place here right and uh, we might buy a retest to get a nice, uh, well, a nice risk to reward. And of course, um, stops would have to be below today's lows. But that, uh, it remains to be seen. We are still monitoring this market. Uh, let's go ahead and let's have a look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar. Now, um, the USD CAD, right? The USD CAD has been a tricky, tricky, tricky trade. Um, after uh, that, uh, we sold those highs, if you remember, right? Um, I think it were, no, actually, no, this is the four hour chart. Uh, what we sold were these highs right here. And then, um, I was trying to find a uh, new sell opportunity, but it didn't pan out. Now, right now we are training above, above this, uh, about the 123, right? On the daily, um, actually, I, I have a ton of lines that don't make sense here. So uh, I'm going to delete them. Um, uh, this key level right here, the 120, yeah, 123, the 123 or those um, highs is where we saw sellers in uh, uh, May 2021, right? I mean, about a month ago or so. And of course, this is where we are seeing buyers jumping in here. Okay, so um, the uh, downside on the USD CAD is no longer in play, in my opinion, right? Uh, and um, well, looking and, and this is the thing, right? Looking at the hourly chart, um, well, the immediate direction is uh, to the downside, right? Um, if you uh, let's actually calculate from from uh, uh this is friday's range right of course friday was non farm favorable so we are looking at a 139 pip range on friday to the downside right and uh, uh price uh today opening lower filling that gap and retesting um these previous lows and highs and that weekly pivot um, but if, uh, I mean, just by looking at those hourly candles, right, there's absolutely no direction in this market whatsoever. Um, and, uh, um, well, because uh, this would be a, a US dollar play, I'd rather, um, put, uh, the risk on the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. But, um, 
I mean, if price breaks with today's lows and Friday's lows, we could could see uh, the USD CAD retest at 122.50, right? Euro US dollar. Now the Euro US dollar is very bullish, right? I am very bullish the Euro USD, and uh, actually we could. I mean, uh, uh, we could get that opportunity to buy uh, the Euro versus the US dollar on a um, well. On a um, on the breakout of this um, um, well bearish structure, right? But uh, yeah, the thing about this uh, trade is that again uh, the upside is capped by this level, and again it's the same story as uh, the GBPUSD. Um, well, it looks good, but once you plot that level, you can see that uh, well it's going to be thick. And it's going to be hard for buyers to to break uh, through that level or swipe all the sell orders that are going to be placed here. Okay. Now let's have a quick look at the DXY how it's behaving. Now well, what I'm waiting for on DXY is a break of those uh, Friday slows, right? Uh, it's looking like uh, sellers are jumping into this market, which is why we are seeing some bullishness on the uh, euro versus the US dollar. But the thing about this again is that big level. So um, um, it is not a profit. I mean, it could, um, the the profitability of this trade um, is not uh, good long term, right? I mean, uh, you have to look at it like this: um, the uh, probability of these uh, of buyers swiping with the sell orders that are going to be in place here. Um, it's not that high, which means that um, on a vacuum, this setup is not going to be profitable long term. So that's why we are not going to take it. Now, the Aussie US dollar, um, well, the Aussie USD uh, open a little bit lower, fill that gap, continue to retest uh, Thursday's um, highs. And uh, now we are seeing some uh, buyers uh, or some bullishness, right? This is, of course, US dollar driven. And uh, we moved our stops just below today's lows to tighten our risk on this um, on this trade. Um, uh, I'm not going to go ch through the uh, pound yen because uh, you're going to get that um, uh, analysis sent. Um, gold. Um, yeah, gold uh, keeps on trading. And right now it's trading at the highs of this big um, you know range that um, it has been trading since um, um, since um, a month ago three weeks ago right um, this uh, I mean what what concerns me about this um, possible fake out uh, and you, and uh, if you remember I'm still bullish on uh, metals uh, but what concerns me a little bit is that uh, exhaustion in buying, right? Um, you know, uh, Friday, uh, Friday's highs were right at the top of that range, and today's highs again at the top of that range being rejected. Well, we need to see um, what, and today, you know, today the uh, the U.S. Um, uh, the U.S. traders are on holiday. Uh, it's long weekend, Fourth of July. Uh, so we are not going to see that uh, New York volume that we always wait on, that pre-market volume. So uh, we might just get some ranging around those highs and uh, maybe that breakout. Now, uh, having said that, um, yeah, let's continue with the hourly. Having said that, uh, if uh, if uh, price breaks to the upside and uh, if it trades above that 1800 level, we might uh, we might um, be able to look for some longs. Now that is not a given, and uh, I will keep you posted. Um, let's finish up with um, uh, Bitcoin. Um, you know, Bitcoin right now retesting um, Friday's. This is Friday's highs, that weekly pivot, that big, big, big uh, um, key level. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, uh, I mean, uh, this big buying candle that we got pre-open, uh, this was around 
yeah i don't remember but um uh, here the market opens at uh, or futures open at 4 p.m and uh, i think that this big buying candle was around 245 or so uh you know um we got that uh retest of the previous broken level uh and uh, i mean we have to see if uh uh, buyers continue to jump into this market. I really like the upside in Bitcoin. Uh, and um, what I like the most is that it's lagging this big move in Ethereum. So Ethereum right now is the strongest one. Well, of the cryptocurrencies that I do have on my watch list. And uh, just uh, have a look at uh, the previous, uh, uh, well, this is today's range, right? So this Friday, this Thursday, right? So let's have a look at the range from Thursday's lows to today's highs. We're talking about an 18.27 move, move to the upside. And uh, if we look at the same uh, range in Bitcoin, um, where is it? Right from the lows to the highs, it's just an 8.53%. So Bitcoin is lagging that uh, big breakout in Ethereum, that Ethereum had. So that is what I am waiting for. Right. So uh, today is going to be a slow day. You know, uh, uh, there's a bank holiday in the United States. So uh, we are going to keep it a little tight. Um, and uh, yeah, let's have a great week and uh, be careful out there.